You can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club. The proper function of man is to live, not to exist. I shall not waste my days in trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. But I am I and I won't subordinate my taste to the unanimous judgment of mankind. Life is not a matter of holding good cards, but sometimes playing a poor hand well. He was a man without a past, whose future was the imminent grave and whose present was a bitter fever of living. Life achieves its summit when it does to the uttermost that which it was equipped to do. I would rather be a superb meteor, every atom of me in magnificent glow, than a sleepy and permanent planet. Don't loaf and invite inspiration, light out after it a club. As one grows weaker one is less susceptible to suffering. There is less hurt because there is less to hurt. I would rather be ashes than dust. I would rather be a superb meteor, every atom of me in magnificent glow, than a sleepy and permanent planet. The aim of life was meat. Life itself was meat. Life lived on life. There were the eaters and the eaten. One cannot violate the promptings of one's nature without having that nature recoil upon itself. His conclusion was that things were not always what they appeared to be. Thenceforth, in the nature of things, he would possess an abiding distrust of appearances. I'd rather sing one wild song and burst my heart with it, than live a thousand years watching my digestion and being afraid of the wet. A bone to the dog is not charity. Charity is the bone shared with the dog, when you are just as hungry as the dog. Intelligent men are cruel. Stupid men are monstrously cruel. It's better to stand by someone's side than by yourself. As one grows weaker one is less susceptible to suffering. There is less hurt because there is less to hurt. He was a killer, a thing that preyed, living on the things that lived, unaided, alone, by virtue of his own strength and prowess. Surviving triumphantly in a hostile environment where only the strong survive. Fear urged him to go back, but growth drove him on. Man rarely places a proper valuation upon his womankind, at least not until deprived of them. They were not half living, or quarter living. They were simply so many bags of bones in which sparks of life fluttered faintly. Every book was a peephole into the realm of knowledge. His hunger fed upon what he read, and increased. Limited minds can recognize limitations only in others. The more he studied, the more vistas he caught of fields of knowledge yet unexplored and the regret that days were only 24 hours long became a chronic complaint with him. The wild still lingered in him and the wolf in him merely slept. Darn the wheel of the world! Why must it continually turn over? Where's the reverse gear? San Francisco is gone. Nothing remains of it but memories. And how have I lived? Frankly and openly though crudely. I have not been afraid of life. I have not shrunk from it. I have taken it for what it was at its own valuation. And I have not been ashamed of it. Just as it was, it was mine. The most beautiful stories always start with wreckage. There's only one way to make a beginning, and that is to begin, and begin with hard work, and patience, prepared for all the disappointments. You look back and see how hard you worked and how poor you were, and how desperately anxious you were to succeed, and all you can remember is how happy you were? Show me a man with a tattoo and I'll show you a man with an interesting past. If cash comes with fame, come fame, if cash comes without fame, come cash. 
Desire is a pain which seeks easement through possession. The word is too weak. There is no word in the language strong enough to describe my feelings. Love cannot in its very nature be peaceful or content. It is a restlessness, an unsatisfaction. I can grant a lasting love just as I can grant a lasting unsatisfaction, but the lasting love cannot be coupled with possession, for love is pain and desire and possession is easement and fulfillment. There is an ecstasy that marks the summit of life, and beyond which life cannot rise. And such is the paradox of living, this ecstasy comes when one is most alive, and it comes as a complete forgetfulness that one is alive. This ecstasy, this forgetfulness of living, comes to the artist, caught up and out of himself in a sheet of flame, it comes to the soldier, warm at in a stricken field and refusing quarter, and it came to Buck, leading the pack, sounding the old wolf cry, straining after the food that was alive and that fled swiftly before him through the moonlight. Don't write too much. Concentrate your sweat on one story, rather than dissipate it over a dozen.